<laughs> yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday Morning Real Estate Marketing Show with Ruthie Rocks, Ruth Albrand, and I am Marketing Max. This is episode or show number 415. And today, actually, I'm excited about this uh, guest. We have a top producing real estate agent out of San Diego, California with eXp Realty, who's going to talk to us about a little bit about what's happening with California these days. Uh, and uh, some other topics uh, related to real estate. So stay tuned for Bobby. He's going to come back on in here a second. But before we get to Bobby, Ruth, what is happening in Las Vegas? Well, what's happening is we're losing inventory by the moment. <laughs> yes. We're down to 1.1 months of inventory with only uh, 4,504 homes on the market. Wow. Um, yeah, and it's it keeps going lower and lower. So yesterday, I was happy that we listed 143 homes. That, okay. Yes, that's that's fantastic, and I'm mean, I'm so excited that we did that. Um, we closed 121, and we put 91 under contract. So as long as we keep listing more than we close and put under contract, uh, we won't get under a month because if we get right. under a month. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to say those bidding wars and all that stuff going on and the prices going up and you know what uh, happens. <laughs> it's starting to feel like a little frenzy, like it, like the 2002, 2003 era right now with the inventory we, levels. Well, you know, in 2020, um, we were just doing fantastic. We were beating all the previous year's records until COVID hit. Right. Um, however, we still ended up with 2021 only selling um, 288 homes less than we sold in 2020. So we picked up steam toward the end of the year yes. and we were selling, you know, like 119 homes a day versus the 120 that we were selling in 2019. 2019. <laughs> I got to right. right. get 2021 in my mind here. Yeah. So, but this year, so far, and we've had the same number of business days, we've sold 642 homes compared to last year, 540. So wow. we're already doing 13 more a day than we did in 2020. So uh, I look this, for this year just to be a banner year in real estate in Las Vegas. And yeah, I it look, looks like it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. And this is the 301st day of the quarantine. Um, and of course, all the agents are saying, oh, God, this thrill is gone. We're sick of this. <laughs> but, um, you know, 2020 was prosperous for many people. And we're going to bring Bobby on because he did have a prosperous year. Yeah. Many agents in Las Vegas did fantastic because we surpassed, well, the iBuyer platforms did 53% less deals in 2020 than they did in 2019, which is so exciting that uh, we outperformed them and they kind of pulled back. And so far this year, they're still not uh, up in the top 10 like they were previously. So mm -hmm. let's bring Bobby on and yes. uh, we will, what, it takes about three seconds, Bobby, and you will be on. There I am. <laughs> there you How are. Going, everybody? All right. All right. Welcome to the show, Bobby. So I always, uh, I, I always start off the show uh, asking you know a little bit about, about your background here. I mean, are you originally from San Diego or are you a transplant there? Where, where, where's where, very where few, are? very few are actually born in San Diego. <laughs> okay. It is a place that people find, and they once they find it, you can't unsee it. It's <laughs> right. America's finest city by far. Uh, originally from Boston, Massachusetts, I okay. came out here in 1983. Uh, and uh, it was a, a summer vacation, just uh, two weeks. Uh, we had one family member out here and just absolutely fell in love with uh, San Diego. And we moved out the next summer. And I've lived out here ever since, except for one year in guess where? Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas. There we go. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, is, uh, it's a great city. I love Las Vegas. Um, it was a little tough for me. The, the seasonal change was a little too cold and a little too hot. <laughs> well, I know I have a wool jacket on today and I noticed you just have a, a golf shirt on. So. Oh, yeah. It's, it, I, if, if you could see outside, it's perfect. It's like 70 yeah. degrees. It's uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. I'm not playing golf today, though. I wish I could. I got too right. much going on. Right, this is the right. busiest first week in real estate in my 20 years. I just the phone's oh, ringing wow. off the hook. There is just so many people wanting to transact uh in this this new year 
Um, you know, the one thing that the pandemic really did for most people is it it really uh, put a spotlight on their current living situation. Because when you're at a, a home, you know, as much as we have been uh, lately, you you really see the glaring um, you know uh, problems with your home. And so, uh, if you can fix it, then people are fixing it. That's why Home Depot is doing so dang good. Absolutely, uh, they're right. busy as heck and. Uh, and, con and you can't get a contractor to save your life uh, to do any work uh, right now because <laughs> everybody's remodeling or they're they're moving. And, uh, you know, I already moved three years ago, moved into my dream home, and uh, we actually ended up remodeling our backyard. And that's just about done. So I'm really excited about that. But uh, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, I've been selling real estate for almost uh, actually it'd be 20 years this coming year. Oh, wow. Okay. And yeah. Um, you know, love this business and just it's uh it's a tr it's truly an honor to help people with such a a big asset and I take it very seriously. I make sure that you know we always get top dollar if we're selling a listing and if if we're on the buy side, we're always making sure we get them the best possible uh, property for the money. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, the most interesting topic that we all are talking about right now, I think Las Vegas is a beneficiary of this aspect or this phenomenon that's happening, which is the Great California Exodus that's happening right now. So, uh, I want to hear your thoughts on, you know, from a San Diego perspective, what's what's happening there, and you know, how's the the real estate environment changed because of this? Well, you know, I think what's interesting every decade that I've lived here there has been an exodus at some point. Hmm. And um, so I think there's a little too much hype with it or a uh, little political uh, political stuff with it. You know, a lot of people don't like our governor. And so they're, they're jumping ship, they're moving to other states, which I don't like to see because, you know, obviously you don't want to leave or you don't want to see good people leave. Uh, one of my good friends shut down their business 30 employees, they all moved to Colorado. Wow. And when they moved there, they bought homes that were bigger and cheaper. And so it's uh, it's sad to see that happening right now. But, uh, you know, th this is Cal California is where people come to make money, build a family, and then they leave. And this has been going on for decades. Um, so I don't think it's really anything new. Hmm. Um, okay. However, it might be a little bit more than than it was before. And what's interesting now is, and uh, you know, obviously California is a big state. You know, we got like 20, 20 plus million people. San Francisco and LA, there's your exodus. Mm. And and those Bobby, are the, those just, are the cities. Oh, so here, it's a U-Haul published this. So, uh, they said that in 2019, San Francisco was considered a city that saw growth with more of its trucks entering than leaving. However, in 2020, San Francisco was the epicenter of the Bay Area's exodus and yeah. departures accounted for 58 percent of all one way U-Haul traffic from March through June, adding that San Jose and Oakland reflected similar trends. And here I put on the screen where they're moving to. Yep. This a is, lot of people moving to Tennessee. You know, I'm surprised that Tennessee's at the top of that list. Um, I've heard so many people going to Texas, Arizona, and Florida. Uh, my my nephew actually moved to Tennessee, so I, I you know I, I do know some people moving there, but I'm surprised to see that at the top of the list. In Ohio, what's going on in right. Ohio, man? Ohio. What's going on there? Well. <laughs> Everybody wants well, to see Dave Chappelle, apparently. You know? Everything apparently. is inexpensive there. I mean, we were there. Uh, we've been there several times over the past several years. Uh, John goes to the Cleveland Clinic there. I mean, and there's a lot. I mean, uh, John's uh, uh, son lives there. And you can buy a huge home with a huge, like a half acre for what, I mean, you wouldn't even, I mean, under $150,000. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, nice homes. And so people are moving there for, yeah. you know, the cost of living. I don't, well, I don't know if it's for the jobs because I see many factories and many of their industries shut down. Yeah, no, I think it's a lot of people uh, retiring and going uh, somewhere else, buying homes for cash and, yeah. uh, and then living off their investments. Or a lot of people can work remotely now. And mm -hmm. I think that's what's really helping out San Diego. We're getting people in. People aren't moving out of San Diego uh, in the, the 
uh, you know, like uh, like it is in LA and San Francisco. We're getting a lot of people from San Francisco down here now too, because cool. you know this. It's still mm -hmm. obviously you know it's an hour and a half uh, plane ride or something like that, hour and twenty minutes. So if someone wants to live down here, they can you know if they need to go to their job once a month or twice a month, super easy to do to jump on a plane real quick. But uh, you know this this uh, you know virtual world that we're entering really um, opens up a lot of avenues for people to uh, to to pick their next home. Right. So how, are, are you are you guys running into the same type of inventory issues that we're running into right now here in Las Vegas <laughs> in, in San Diego as well? OK, well, you know, I think um, especially right now, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, my God, there's no inventory. But you know what? It's the first week of the year. I um, I didn't put any listings on the market this this week because you know I, I believe that you know towards the end of this month that's where the the real hot market's gonna 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 happen. Uh, although we put one on right before uh, Christmas. I mean, like three days before Christmas, and we had twenty offers and sold wow. for ninety five thousand over asking. So when there is no inventory. You know, certain properties yeah. will sell at a ridiculous price. This was yeah. a flip property, and we did pr underprice it just a hair to get to kind of get that mob there. Yep. And I yep. think uh, that's really the smartest thing that agents can do in this pandemic that we are in. Is you know, you can't you can't overprice a listing in this type type of market. It's just going to sit, and it's not going to get the traffic, uh, and you're certainly not going to get the terms that you want. Uh, in this situation, we got every single term we wanted. Um, and in other situations, we've been able to get rent backs. We've been able to get anything our sellers want. We've been able to get it. And, uh, you know, so because because it is there's no inventory. And, uh, you know, the rates have gone down to the lowest levels we've ever seen. Oh, and my so God. I, they went I, down again Friday. I know. I, yeah. It's crazy. I really hope that it stops because it's unnecessary at this point. The rates need to freeze where they're at. There's no reason to drop them anymore. There's so many people out there buying. Um, why drop right. them even further? Because then all you're doing is creating a bigger frenzy. And I hate to say it, you're forming a bubble in that situation. Because right now, homes are cheaper in San Diego to buy. And this, is, this may sound crazy than 2006. When you compare really? the payment of uh, a sure, home, sure. in 2006, the rates were 6%. Now they're 25 to 3%. And right. uh, you know the median cost of a home has jumped to 650. That is a 13% increase from last year. So uh, pretty impressive growth. Uh, we're expected to have another 8% growth this year, which you know remains to be seen if there's a lot of inventory that comes on the market. I expect that that number to get chipped down a little bit. Um, you know, some people say that the market is just way overvalued, but it really just comes down to rates. If rates stay low for an extended period of time, then we don't we're not going to see any any tough times. But you know, everything's cyclical. You know, I've, I've been in this business long enough to know you're going to see the ups and the downs. And you know, um, so every advice that we're giving to our clients. And um, our main niche is move up and move down um, uh, sellers. So people who are in homes already that maybe it's just not fitting their needs anymore. I always ask the question, is your home going to fit your needs for five years or more? If the answer is no, especially right now, then you got to make the move. Because if the rates go down further, then that's going to be even a bigger feeding frenzy, which is going to make it even harder to buy the next one. So if you do it sooner than later, then you can get into that home now or in the spring. And then let's say at the end of the year or next year, the rates come down even further. You're already in your home. You don't have to worry about it. Right. But now guess what you, you get to do? Now you get to refinance, refinance and, right. and lower your payment even more. Those are the kinds of positions that I want my clients to be in. I don't want them to be in you know chaotic situations, which some people say right now is chaotic. However, every single listing that we have taken where someone's doing a move up or move down, they have been able to find a property within the specified amount of time because we do a 60 day rent back on all of our uh, all of our seller listings. Great, great uh, with, idea. With a 45 day close, that's 105 days to find your next home. And that's plenty of time for working with my team because we're, we're we're scouring the MLS. We're going we're 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 reaching out to all the top agents around the the, the town. Uh, we really get um, 
uh, hyper local when it comes to uh, finding the agents who do the most amount of business in that area and then asking them what they've got coming up. And, right. and we got to be really, really active. And one of the tricks that we've been doing this year is tracking the coming soon listings, which I know in your market, you have coming yes, soon listings. And, and in our market, some agents are using it, some aren't. Uh, I'm trying to get more people to use it, more agents to oh, use it. Yeah. Because it is, it's a no brainer when you think about it, because if you're tracking those, you're first in line. And well, I can't tell you, like we've probably sold 12 or 13 homes this year just from tracking the coming soons and being the first in line to show the property, to build the relationship. And you know, if you give me a two or three day head start over the rest of the competition, it's done deal. There's no way you, you know we're gonna lose that deal. And so uh, that's been something that's been very, very effective for us this year. And so so I hope that more people uh, will use the coming soon strategy, uh, even if it's just a day or two. Um, it encourages people to use uh, a realtor first and foremost, because if, right. if it's not on all of the public portals and it's only uh, going to real realtor clients, then the, the clients that are working with realtors, they have an advantage. So then that makes us relevant again as realtors. And uh, and I think that's that's great. You know, and, you know, I've been doing this 20 years. And I could tell you this, this is actually the biggest change and the biggest help to realtors that I've seen and all of the other stuff is all just, it's uh, hot, it's smoke, it's smoke and mirrors. You know, the, you know, we talk, we could talk about the iBuyer program. We could talk about the guaranteed sold program. There's agents in our town that are actually promoting no commissions. I'm like, are you kidding? All you're doing is taking, you know, uh, it's like the shell game, moving it around. Okay, so you wanna make the buyer pay commissions. Well, then that's more money out of their pocket, which means right. you're gonna pay less for your home. So it's just, it's 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 insanity, it's the funny. stupidity that is going on out there right now. And uh, and so, you know, the, if any homeowners out there or any buyers out there, you know, really educate yourself. And, you know, the all these new programs, they're lipstick on a pig. It's the same old crap. And, uh, you know, you got all these big banks funding these companies. And, you know, these these are banks from other countries trying to change the way that we we buy and sell real estate. And what makes me really mad is they think homeowners are lazy. And that's why they, they think the iBuyer program is going to take off, um, you know, because they just think homeowners are lazy. They think that you know, you just want to trade in your home just like you trade in a car. Well, every single time I've traded in a car, I've always gotten ripped off. And every, I don't know anybody <laughs> who, gets, who gets a fair trade at a right. dealership for your car. You don't. And it's the same thing with a house. And right. it's actually amplified because it's such a big investment. And, you know, some of these, um, the way that these uh, companies are doing it is they'll overpay on certain homes just to get the buzz out there. Hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, the neighborhood's like, oh my God, you know, this company paid this for that house. You know, my house is better. Maybe they'll pay more for mine. Right. And and then they come over to their house and it's like not as good of an offer. So so it's kind of a, a bait and switch type of thing. I don't like it. So, um, so you know, how, how from, from a marketing standpoint, right? We, we, we've seen these iBuyer programs come into, into the marketplaces, you know, for the last three, four years. Mm -hmm. How have you adjusted from, you know, your listing presentation, right? To do you address, because they're obviously getting bombarded with marketing materials and and you know mailers yeah. and if if they're online they're looking at one of the big ones right yeah. just to do their research you know what what are some of the things that you ha have have implemented to in order to kind of you know sell yourself or or present yourself as something more valuable and, and position you better well i think you got to look at the numbers and you got to look at um you know i i do uh closely watch that that market uh with the iBuyer program <laughs> Um, and you got to just, um, you got to really focus on, sorry, hold on one second. You got to focus on educating the consumer on the options. And so we really focus or we ask them, you know, have you considered selling to one of these companies? Mm. And if they say no, uh, you know, no, we would never do that. Then I don't really talk about it much more. 
But if they say yes, you know, I, you know, we we have we we're getting bombarded with these letters and all these things, uh, which you know, I I I have a property that I have a renter in here in San Diego, and I get letters every month from a specific company. Right, it's really annoying. <laughs> you know, it's like every <laughs> single month. So so I I address it, and if it is something that they're interested in, here's the beautiful thing: we can do anything. So I can I can act and I've done this uh, on several properties where we've taken the listing and then we've gone to some of the iBuyer um, you know programs and we've gotten an offer from them and then we've seen okay this is this is the bottom line does it make sense for you to go this route or will you let me put it on the market for one weekend and cause a frenzy and w- and that's what we've been doing and when we Ooh. do that. And this is what what's fun for me. I can go back and see, say, I told you so. Look at we got you thirty five thousand dollars more. In fact, earlier this year, um, actually uh, earlier last year, back in um, I guess it was May, we had a, a retiree from the the uh, U.S. Navy. He was in the Navy for like thirty something years. Um, unbelievable person, and he retired to Las Vegas. And uh, and so uh, we helped him. And the same thing, you know, the the uh, I buyers were coming out and um, they, they, they made offers and we crushed it by like 35 or 40,000. So imagine leaving 35 or $40,000 on the table. Right. For me, that's just unacceptable, you know, in any situation. Um, and especially when the companies are lying about it because they come at you with, oh, you don't have to pay commission. You know, <laughs> well, you're paying a service fee. You call it something different. You can call it whatever you want. You're still, still out paying, of your pocket. You're paying right. for it, you know? And so by not going on the open market, especially right now, it's just, it, it's really, um, it's not smart uh, from a business decision because when you let the whole world know that your home's for sale and it's, and you market it correctly and you have minimum marketing times, we do a minimum marketing time of seven days on the market. Now that doesn't mean seven days of showings because mm-hmm. we only do four days of showings. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then we're reviewing all offers on Tuesday. So that's kind of our strategy. We come on the market on a Monday as a coming soon, and then we switch it over to uh, an active listing on uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday, showing start Friday, shut it down Monday, and then we're in escrow by by Tuesday, Wednesday, wow. actually usually by Wednesday. Wow. Uh, so yeah. it, it, it's it's very simple. It doesn't leave any money on the table. And here's the best part about it. Buyer one does their home inspection. They don't, they don't love the property. They say, you know what? Uh, too many things wrong with it. Okay. In the olden days, we would have you know, been like, ah, oh, darn, now we got to put it back on the market. We got to do everything all over again. Right? I got to sell this twice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now with this strategy, you know, and especially if you're pricing it correctly, because then you're getting that feeding frenzy and you have tons of offers. Now you have backup offer number uh, one, backup offer number two, and backup offer number three in a row ready to go. And you don't have to recreate the wheel, do another marketing plan and, and uh, you know, hit the market, uh, hit the market again. And more importantly, for the people who are worried about COVID, they don't have to worry about people in their house again. Right. So, right. so we tell people, go stay with somebody for, for a weekend, go get a hotel room, go take a little vacation, you know, go to Las Vegas. They're open. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bring your revenue here, please. please. You know, it, and that makes that to me, that's the way to do it in this kind of market. You know, just, uh, it, 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 it makes more sense than, uh, you know, having a flipper come in. And that's the other thing, man, it's driving me crazy to see people, especially, um, you know, older clients who have homes that, have some deferred maintenance, they think that their home isn't worthy of hitting the MLS and and, hmm. and isn't worthy of selling for top dollar. Right. And that I could that couldn't be further from the truth. There's so many people out there looking for uh, looking looking for fixers that they can live in, that they can uh, own themselves right. and fix up themselves. Right. Instead, they're giving people are giving the, right. the money or giving the houses away to these flippers. And then they're the ones making the profit. Exactly. And, yeah. You know, it's uh, you know, and, and and everybody has their reasons. You know, sometimes people need need to get out of town really quickly, um, but you know, it, it's not. It's it's usually you usually have enough time. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, but 
you know, sometimes people think, oh, well, it's going to take 90 days to sell my house. It's not going to take 90 days to sell your house if you price it right. right. So what are you doing now, you know, with the with the change and the new iBuyer? How are you changing your marketing? Uh, are you... Is your strategy changed through what, what happened last year with COVID and moving forward? Wh what are some of the key areas that you're going to be focusing with you and your team? Well, we, we have a pandemic listing presentation that we use. And, um, you know, it's a touchless uh, showing uh, process uh, that, that we use. And then um, the marketing of it, we do a, a floor plan on every single listing. And then we're doing a... Um, uh, we're doing a 3D virtual tour on all of our listings too. Mm -hmm. And that has been great because, you know, you don't want somebody coming to your house and um, if they don't love what they see from the pictures and, it, you know, it's like, what's the point of having that showing if they, you know, if they're looking at the pictures and, and, and they, they don't love it, then, then they shouldn't come, you know? And so, so we're trying to put as much, uh, pictures and, and the virtual tours, the video walkthrough tours, all of those things are very, very uh, critical because then um, the showings that do happen, you know, it's not like they haven't seen the property. They, you know, the showings, it should be super serious buyers. Yeah. Um, so that way you're limiting the amount of people in your home because obviously, you know, this is a, a serious virus that's going around. It's spreading like crazy in California right now. I'm not sure what your numbers are in uh, in Nevada, but you know, it's a serious thing and people are dying. And so, you know, we all want to be be safe. And and uh, and you know, to my knowledge, not one single person has you know caught COVID at any uh, any showings or you know any of these um, you know any real estate related things. I haven't heard of one single um you know death or anything like that related to it so thankfully you said no no touch showings what do you uh so uh touchless, no touch touchless showings <laughs> so a touchless showing is we 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 uh we meet the 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 client out front and we ask them not to touch anything it's that simple so when we come into the property obviously we have to touch things so i'm the you only one i'm only the only one touching things we're wearing gloves uh or uh, yeah, you know, we're doing the the hand sanitizer. Right. You know, get loading up on that, um, and so it, uh, it. You know, but it's very important to us that we're not letting the clients mm -hmm. uh, touch things, and uh, and everyone wears a mask, and it's uh, there's no kids. It's it's the the buyer only. No right. family. You know, it's not like a, a parade of people coming in like it used to be. You know, everybody wants to bring the the mom, the dad, the cousin, all that stuff. We're we're asking people yeah. not to do that uh, until maybe until you're in escrow. That's, and yeah, that's uh, in and our we, COVID guidelines as well. And yeah. um, so when you do these uh, um, time, you know, like you can come see the house between two and four on Saturday, as you mentioned, it's like an open house. Do you let just one person in, in at a time or a couple in at a time? You may have misunderstood me. We, we're not doing anything like that. We we uh, every every showing is a thirty minute window, okay. so it's an exclusive showing. Gotcha. Must have you must have an appointment. You must sign the coronavirus uh, uh, disclosure, um, and so it's it's a very um, yeah. You know, we've stopped doing open houses altogether because uh, we we tried it because um, they did open it up again to where it was like kind of a virtual thing, and you had to schedule an appointment and all this stuff and. I, I just, it, it, to me, it just didn't make any sense. You know, it's like if somebody, if somebody's serious and wants to come see the house, they can schedule an appointment. It's very simple. And, uh, and so we, we accommodate those showings, um, but it's a 30 minute window. So, yeah. uh, so that way there's no crossover right. and in between showings, there's time to, to clean up uh, any, you know, any doorknobs that have been touched and things like that. Right. And you know what I've noticed here in our market, um, there's not as many open houses, but there's a lot more appointments. So people mm -hmm. still want to see the homes. Right. And yep. Yeah. So it, 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 it's, it's kind of leveled off here a little bit. I don't think people are losing business because uh, they're not having open houses. Of course, the new agents who get their, you know, get business from open houses that possibly is uh, hurting them, but, but they're finding yeah. other ways to get the, uh, they're going on social media, you know, they're doing the Facebook ads and things. All like they that. need to do is pick up the phone. <laughs> okay. So you pick up the phone, call your friends. It's, right. This is what's so important these days, you know, yeah. and this is why, um, 
you know, like you look at, you know, companies like Zillow, they've done very well in the pandemic because agents aren't picking up the phone. They, they got it. You'll get direct to the consumer and find out what's going on with their friends, their family. Are you in the best uh, home situation? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it's a very simple conversation. You know, hey, happy new year. Just right. want to in with you. And, you know, how, how are things going with you and your home? You know, you bought it eight years ago for me. And, you know, is it still fitting your needs? If they say yes, I'm like, great. I did my job. Right. I got you. I got you something that you love. And that's that makes me feel just as good course, yeah. as, as, hey, yeah, we want to move. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's definitely a good feeling to 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 actually put them in a good situation for the long haul. Yeah. So that's a good segue here. And, that, and that's really the, the question I wanted to expand on from a marketing span. Are, are you at a point 20 years in the business now here, Bobby? Uh, you, you probably have that magical number of a thousand clients or a thousand, you know, real qualified buyers and sellers that you probably don't have to do a lot of, you know, external marketing to cold prospects. Are you still you know, doing cold prospecting at all? You know, from like, I am not or, a cold caller. Um, I do pay for a service uh, of uh, people to call uh, uh, circle prospecting around certain neighborhoods that I like to work in. Mm -hmm. So we do a little bit of that and that's been pretty fruitful. Uh, we also, um, we work with some of, uh, some of the, uh, I call them lead aggregators. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, after being in the business 20 years, these lead aggregators, they want the best in the business. And so I've partnered up with a few of those and they give me some leads. But you know, for me personally, my it's my referrals, my past clients. Mm -hmm. um, those are that's what really kind of keeps me busy. But I do have a team, and so we generate a lot of leads on Facebook. We generate generate uh, you know um, uh, Google AdWords and and different different other mediums. But it's um, you know it, it, it's it's really easy to generate leads that uh, these days. The problem with our industry, though, from what I've seen. There's so much lead generation going on and so much concentration on that name, phone number, email, but they forget about, okay, well, now I get this lead or this customer. Now what do I do? <laughs> you know, what's my process? Right. You know, am I sending out a, a personal, uh, personal note with a business card thanking them? Am I sending out brownies to them, cookies? Uh, heck, we did a listing appointment the other day um, and the lady was just so nice. This lady, uh, her name was Mary and uh, she was just so sweet. And I sent her flowers after after uh, the meeting, you know, and those are the kinds of things that us as agents have to start doing, you know, or, or, or if you know, or doing more of, I should say, because I'm yeah. sure I'm sure many agents do a lot of things for their clients. And uh, but it's, a it, you know, the process of capturing that client is very important. Um, and I think that's where agents really aren't focusing enough because you can generate a thousand leads a month if you want. Yep. But if your process stinks and you're only, you know, uh, getting, you know, converting a, a half a percent or a percent. I mean, think about all those no's you've got to go through all that frustration of calling those people and, not, and, not, and them not calling you back and all that stuff. That's that's not fun, you know, and so I'm a very warm lead kind of guy. So I like to generate leads, uh, especially on my listings. Uh, property uh, property uh, um, uh, leads have been very good for us, especially on Facebook. So every listing that we get, we're putting ads on Facebook uh, in, 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 you know, drawing a, a nice, nice uh, area around it and getting people to contact us through that. But it really comes down to what is your hook? What makes you different as an agent? And I think that's where a lot of agents need to spend a little bit more time. For me, it's all about, I love, I, I want to get people into their best property, move up, move down. That's our, our main niche. And I, I just love people. I've been in customer service for 30 years. Uh, I'm a straight shooter. Uh, I think too many, too many people come into this business and they come in it with a sales approach as, a, as opposed to a consultation approach. Um, you know, I, I've told people don't buy a house. You know, I've told people don't sell your house. I, you know, I'm not here to make a quick buck. I'm here to build relationships because this is a relationship business. And so I think that's where people really need to focus more on and, and, uh, and less with all the sales gimmicks and all the bull crap out there. 
I mean, it's just, it's exhausting, you know, and, and, you know, you see some of these guys and girls out there with all these gimmicks and they're doing really well because they're getting the phone to ring, but it's a bait and switch. And to me, I don't ever want to start off a relationship based on a lie. Mm. And that's, that's why I like, I, I just don't like all the gimmick marketing that's being done in our industry. And I think that's something that as an agent, you can, you, you be the opposite of that. And you and you call people up and say, look, you know, I'm a straight shooter. I want I want to help you. You know, what's what's your situation? Let's put a plan in place and uh, and and get it done. And you know, and, and provide value. And that's right. the thing. Agents have to provide value, or they're, they're just not going to last. And and I'll tell you right now, five years from now, my prediction is a thirty percent reduction in the realtor workforce. Okay, thirty percent at least. So. Right. So agents out there who want to stay in real estate have to really focus on the customer service side of this. Never BS your clients. Always look out for the best interests of them. And, and if it means losing a paycheck, then that's fine because you'll get the paycheck on the next deal and they will appreciate that. You know, like when you tell someone, hey, this is not the property, you should walk away from this property, they they immediately know that, hey, this guy's on my side. Right. You know, and as opposed to, you know, no, I got to keep this person into this deal is no matter what. That's that's not the kind of agent that I want to work with. Right. I want to work with people who are looking out for my best interest. And, you know, you might you might get one deal out of me, but that's it. And you're not going to get any referrals. You're not going to get anything like that. So so uh, why do you say well, what's your thought process on why you think the the real estate agent force is going to be reduced by 30 percent in five years? Well, I think technology is making making this business easier, um, especially I mean, especially now we can close more deals in, in less time. And I don't think there's enough agents out there working on their business enough to make them last. Hmm. OK, because it's going to get more expensive and there's going to be just a consolidation uh, that. But it, what might be interesting, though, over the next 12 months or 24 months, you might see an increase of realtors because of the job situation out there. A lot of people have lost their job. Right. So in here in California, you can't even get a test date to take your test right now. Oh, it's, wow. it's, it's backed up, you know, so it's a little difficult, um, you know, to to get your license right now. And, you know, because of the pandemic. And and so um, so I just I feel like the technology, there's a consolidation happening uh, with, uh, you know, like, there, you know, your solo agent, it, the, it's hard to survive as a solo agent right now. So in my op opinion, you're either going to be a team leader or you're going to be a team member. Solo agents will eventually go away to some extent. Now, someday they might come back, you know, because as pressure comes on on uh, on commissions and, and so forth, that might come back 10 or 15 years from now. But I think right now what you're seeing is big teams are getting bigger. And that uh, across the board uh, in, mm. here in, in, in San Diego, at least that's what's happening. The, the, the best teams are growing and they're they're taking market share and they're partnering up with some of the best agents uh, around. We just uh, added a, a 30 year veteran to my team. Oh, wow. You know? And so that you know, gives you an example right there. You know, and I think agents, too, need that support, you know, because. Yeah, this is an expensive business. You know, when you join my team, I'm paying for the marketing. I'm doing I'm doing all uh, I'm paying for the office. I'm paying for everything almost. You know, so uh, as an agent, you know, it's nice to kind of reduce your expenses as a team member. And then it's nice to have the leads come in. And more importantly, it's nice to have a closer that can help you close the deal. Yeah, and that, that's that's my middle name. I'm they call me the they call me the, <laughs> call the, me closer, the real estate huh? expert, and they call me the closer. All right. So, uh, if you can give, you know, I mean, obviously, with the people coming into um, you know the real estate industry right now, and 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 maybe some even real estate or agents are struggling right now. What would you? What are two or three nuggets that you would kind of share with someone that either is starting off or is just stagnant in their real estate career right now where they can't get past that two, three deal a month, mm -hmm. you know, what do you think, where, where should they focus and, and how, what would you do if you were starting over right now? Super simple. Find a mentor that has been there, done that. And, um, you know, if, if it means joining their team, join their team and, and, and follow that person around. 
you know, I offer to my team, my, my entire team, you want to, you want to shadow me all day, all week, all month, go ahead. You know, I mean, I, so I think it's important to surround yourself with the right people the, in the, in the right mentors, which is hard because there's so many salespeople in our, our in our industry wow. and they sell people on join my team. It's going to be great. You're going to sell lots of houses. <laughs> then they join their team and you don't talk to them anymore. Right. You know, or talk to that talk to that person or talk to that person. Leave me alone. I'm too busy. You know, that's not what you want in a mentor. You want somebody who's available to you, someone who will jump on phone calls with you. My team, you know, I always tell them, if you have a hot uh, a hot person who's, who you know is going to buy or sell, sell home, I want to be in, in on it. I want to talk to him. I want to introduce myself to him. I want to get to know him too and, and help them and, know, and let them know that I'm here to support them as well. And, um, and that's a big thing, you know, that's good. That helps my agents sell a lot more because they can, they can go to their clients and say, look, you know, you know, I'm new, you know, maybe it's a friend of theirs, right? You know, you know, I'm newer to the business. I've been in the business two years, you know, but Bobby's been in the business 20 years and he's the best in San Diego at negotiating contracts, especially on the buy. Well, actually both on both sides, but on the buy side, I, the reason why they call me the closer is because. I literally will pick up the phone and I will put the deal together. I don't care if there's 15 offers, 20 offers, 30 offers. I will make sure that my client gets the deal because that's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so work on your skills. Um, too many agents don't role play at all. They don't talk about, they don't know, they don't know <laughs> yeah. the progression of, yeah. of the conversation and stop selling. That's, that's really that simple. The commission breath. That, that agents have when they're new, they want that deal so bad, you know, that kills them so bad sometimes. You know, it's like they're so aggressive that it pushes people away because the reason why so many buyers are searching online without a real estate agent, it's not because they don't want the help of a real estate agent. Oh. They do. Okay. They really do. But they don't want the nagging of a real estate agent. They don't want the pressure that a real estate agent puts on them. So what the, what do they do? They look online for a year, two years, and then when they're ready, they make the call and they say, "I want to buy that one." That's why we're seeing um, we're seeing less showings for getting people into escrow. I remember back in the day, it was twelve to fifteen showings right before you got into escrow. Nowadays, it's like three or four, sometimes one or two. You know, because people are looking online for so long and because there's limited inventory. So when people find the one that they want, they get excited. They're all about it. They want they're 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 into it, you know. And so um, it, it's so to me, you know, going back to, uh, you know, tips, it, you know, definitely the mentor. Uh, that's the biggest thing. I had a great mentor my first three years in the business. Um, I also had a, I've had a great mentor, Mr. Aaron Taylor in Las Vegas. Uh, oh. For, for the last uh, 22 years or so, 23 years. Uh, love that guy. He's been a, a blessing in my life. And, uh, and so, um, you know, it's, it's really about surrounding yourself with the right people. Uh, coaching programs can be good too. Uh, I've done several of them, uh, actually probably all of them, because uh, I, I, I would bounce around, take nuggets, and right. now I have put together my own plan. And, and, uh, and so uh, I have my own strategies that I use. And, um, and so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So, so yeah. this year you're, you're planning on doing 300 transactions, I understand. At least. <laughs> it's, it's 200 million or in 300, uh, 200 million or 300 transactions. So well, we're, yes, we're excited yes, for this year. And yes. I think I might have actually put the goal a little too low because, uh, you know, if it, anything yeah. looks like this first week of the year, I mean, it's just unreal what's happening, uh, you know, just in the first week. Uh, you know, we, we had so many referrals come in. Uh, we had a, a six million dollar uh, listing referral yesterday, which is fantastic. Wow. And you know, wow. we're working on working on a lot of really just wonderful transactions. What I love about this business is every deal is different, uh, but they're all the same. It's the same process. And that's what, you know, newer agents need to understand. This is, it, it's like an assembly line. You know, you got to find the people who are motivated. Then you need to get them with your lender, get them in a position to buy. Cause now you have a willing buyer and an able buyer. Once they're willing and able, then it's a done deal. And, you know, it's, it's a hard process buying a home. Not everybody loves to do it, 
But do you guys know anybody that's that said, man, I, I sure wish I didn't buy that home. You know, I never hear that. When I call people up like, hey, are you guys happy with this house? You happy you bought it? They're like, yeah, we love it. I'm like, so, you, so you're not, you, you're not uh, uh, upset about uh, writing rent checks or not having to write rent checks anymore. They're like, no, thank God. You know, like right. we love to, we're, you know, you're investing in yourself when you're a homeowner and um, in, in something that, you know, a lot of people are, especially right now, a lot of people are, are thinking, well, maybe it's at the top of the market. Who knows? Nobody knows if it's top of the market or not, but bottom line is these are the lowest interest rates of all time. And in my opinion, I think they're going to go even lower in the in the next year or two. So my opinion is get into the best house now, get yourself settled. And then if in the next year or two, if the rates come down a little bit, then you can refinance and, and you're not having to sell and and ref or sell and buy in that environment. Right. Because if you think it's busy when the rates are at two and a half percent, what do you think it's going to be when they're at one percent? Yeah. And, Bob, and I'm not saying that it's going to get it's going to happen. It, I but it very, very well could because, you know, look at the economy. There's a lot of jobs that are that may never come back. There's a lot of destruction out there between small businesses. And so, you know, who knows? There's it's, uh, you know, you, I think the rates will come down personally. Bobby, on a on a different note, uh, but the same point. We are headed for some inflation. And when uh, we have inflation, guess what uh, asset increases in value? Real estate. Real so, assets. <laughs> yes, assets will increase during inflation. And, you know, in Vegas, we tell you if you buy the medium priced home here, which is 300000 over 10 years, you will add a quarter of a million dollars to your net worth. In San Diego, it's twice that because you just said it was six hundred and some thousand average price for for your market. So, I mean, in in ten years, they've added a half a million dollars to their net worth because of the equity they're building because of the low interest rates and the appreciation we're going to see in the next ten years. Yeah. So, to me, if you can't articulate that to your buyers and sellers, you need to practice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's you know, to be honest though, there's a lot of fear out there. You know, a lot of like you know, in in here. Here's the problem that most buyers are going to face their coworkers or their friends, you know, who are renting also, you know, they may not be able to buy for whatever reason, they're going to put down you for, for buying. They're going to say, why are you buying now? You're buying at the top of the market. You should wait. You know, meanwhile, you're, you're paying 3000 a month in rent. And, you know, like if you do wait, what, what, you know, how much longer do you have to wait a year or two? You know, and then what happens? You the reason why it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, and, and the reason why the market uh, would change is the single reason would be because of interest rates. So your payment would still be the same, right. yeah. <laughs> you know, right. or, or higher. Yeah, right. No, and right. you have to be able to articulate that to people and take them yeah. their way. All right. Well, so Bobby, it's been a pleasure having you today. And uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I yeah. just wanted to ask one more question about, you know, some yeah. of these iBuyer programs now starting brokerage firms, right? Okay. And hiring real estate agents and, 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 and going into that process. I mean, mm -hmm. how, how do you see that coming about and, and what are your thoughts on, on, on some of that situation? Well, I think, I think it really came down for them. If you can't beat us, they had to join us. <laughs> and that's really what it came down to. And, uh, so now it's a level playing field, and uh, I'm not going to say which site, but uh, one of the biggest sites in the world is is becoming a real estate brokerage, and they are going to be using our feed on their website, which will eliminate a lot of data from their website, uh, which, you know, you look at it and you say, okay, well, what makes them special then? <laughs> you know, right. If, they're, if you can get the same data from the MLS and their website, What's the point of using them? The And for the consumer, I want the consumer to listen really, really closely. For the people out there who love shopping local, when you find your real estate agent on any of the public portals, you just realize that you're sending money out of your local market to some other city and you're benefiting big banks because the big banks are the one who are supporting all of these, uh, these or not all of them, but a lot of these companies, these, you know, these uh, d different websites. Okay. And so think about if 
you if you hire the agent locally and you you could you could use their website to find the agent but don't call them through the the website find their number online all of us google us online <laughs> all of us all of us have a website right. call, me, right. call me directly and, and uh you know i've been thinking about doing this and um uh, you know doing some kind of discount of some sort if somebody says you know like a, a certain term or whatever you know like uh right you know hey I, you know um i i've got to come up with a name for it but right. you know the the bottom line though is people need to reach out to agents directly find the agent you want to work with and commit to that agent you know obviously uh there's a lot of agents out there but if you work exclusively with one agent to, to buy a home it's always going to be a better experience but make sure you interview people buyers typically uh, they they pick the very first agent that they talk to. They don't interview people. Um, listings, you know, maybe two people, sometimes three people are interviewed. Um, but you know, find the right agent and don't share the money with Seattle or what all these different cities. Mm -hmm. You know, keep it local and, and and you know, ask that agent for a discount. Tell them, hey, I was going to go with a different agent, but. I, I I wanted to shop local and I wanted to and and so I'm reaching out to you directly. Yeah. I'll give you a discount if you do that all day long. You know, because I the money you know, back into their our your local economy. And that's the that's that's the goal. Yeah. You know, is to keep our local economies thriving. Right. right. Absolutely. Because if you give it to me, I spend money like crazy. <laughs> and I buy local. I, I'm right. I tip big. You know, when I go to especially these days, man, I mean anybody going to a restaurant. You know, tip more than the twenty percent. All these people need the money so bad. It's just you know, it's it's heartbreaking to see what's happening to all of these uh, these these businesses out there. And so, you know, and we have a we have plenty of money as a as a nation. Nobody should be going without anything right now. It's oh, so right. I think we all need right. to band together, help out each other, you know, especially on the local level. That that's where you know that's the one thing that this pandemic has has really taught me is more than anything it, you know all of the external stuff especially the election ah so so annoying all the stuff right it's you know it, it's time to get local because that's what really affects your life more than anything is, is is the the things around you you know get involved with your local politics um you know and and you know make your your local community better i think that's that's really what we need to be focused on these next uh next few years Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good point. So uh, if anyone's hanging out in the last part of the show, I, I think I, I want to name it the first key word for the discount, Bobby. Bobby. It's What's called that? the Boston Closer. Whoever calls Bobby, it says <laughs> Boston Closer. It's a discount from the the, cl the closer discount. <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, and Ruth, you, you're going to put uh, Bobby's contact information up uh, on the video. At one point, uh, when yeah. we repurpose right. this, so yeah. people know. Absolutely. And we appreciate your time, Bobby. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come in and see you guys. And uh, it's been, I think, about a year or so since the last time yeah. we talked. So well, we'll do it it's always a months. pleasure. Let's do it in three months and see uh, if you're on, uh, if you've done 100 deals. Yeah. Oh, man. There we go. Keep, Keep you accountable. The pressure on me. I like the accountability, <laughs> though. Accountability. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, thank you okay. so much, Bobby. And and Max, and just so you know, we're having a, a three CE agency class. Uh, do you work for your client? Prove it on Friday from 10 to 1. And then, then we have um, at, from 2 to 4, we're doing Buffini. And if you want to make more than $100,000, this year, sign up, and we are we'll be teaching the uh, advanced essentials course by Brian Buffini for the next eight weeks, and it's three hundred ninety-five dollars for eight weeks of training. That just to, I mean, one one twentieth of one transaction will pay for it. <laughs> so, so, and I'll go do a quick plug for Buffini. He was my first real estate yeah. coach back in two thousand two, cool. and and uh, that 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 whole system. Uh, set me up for success. Yes, you know, being able to ask for referrals and understanding the verbiage uh, to use, and and um, you know, it, it was a game changer for my business for many many years, and and I still, you know, still uh, appreciate uh, them so much. And in fact, I've been playing golf with Dermot Buffini, uh, oh Brian's younger yeah. brother, oh, and wow. he's awesome. I love Dermot. Yeah, he's yeah. An well, unbelievable man. 
Yeah, we've done the, uh, the the essentials course. Now we're doing the advanced course. And then uh, around June, we're going to do the 100 Days to Greatness for all the beginners and the people that uh, need a brush up on their skills of communicating with people through personal notes and the referral system they have is fabulous. And yeah. you talked about, you know, having a mentor. Well, if you follow the Buffini, uh, you know, as a team leader, and I mean, to me, that's a really good thing to do to get people into that program because then they can manage their expectations and the work they have to do. And one of the things agents don't understand, this is work. <laughs> <laughs> it's work. Yes. So yeah. anyway, thank you everybody. And uh, Matt, you, any parting words? That, that's it. Let's just go out and crush 2021, right? And, and buy local and support your local. You make a great point there. Yes, right. buy local. Yes. All right, Bobby. Hey, everybody. Thanks, Love guys. You. Have a great right. weekend. Have a happy new year. Thank you so yeah. much yeah. for having me. It. It. it started out with a bag. <laughs> oh, yeah.